Okay, right now is the time to get your greeting in if you want to beat Joe this morning. Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Welcome back to 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name is Tom Rigsby. You probably knew that, but it never hurts to remind I am, uh, let's see, that threw me off. I'm the unashamed nonconformist. There you go. Oh, man. I even gave you a heads up and Joe still beat you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I sent out a little message ahead of time. Hey, be on the lookout. Man, y'all are going to have to get on the ball. It's going to be tough. Good morning, Joe. Thank you for joining me. Hey, if you are not Joe, do what Joe just did. Leave a comment, say hi, let me know that you're there. And today is Free Coaching Friday, so if you have a question uh, or a topic that you would like for me to hit, put that down in the comments before I get through all this introductory stuff, and maybe I'll hit it. Otherwise, you're just going to have to listen to me ramble for a couple of minutes. If you are listening on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, TuneIn, or your favorite podcast catcher and you'd like to join the conversation and know what the heck we're talking about, leaving a comment, come over to 7minutesinthemorning.com. That'll get you to the right Facebook page. You can leave a comment and uh, join in the conversation there. All right. Is that everything? I think that's everything. Today is uh, Hot Coffee Friday. Yeah, hot coffee Friday today. So as soon as we're done with the show here, I'm going to jet out of here and head over to Hudson Alpha and join in on that. That's from 7.45 to 9. I think it's 9. No. Yeah, 7.45 to 9 o'clock. Uh, and I'm pretty sure Rich Ortiz is a speaker today. I might be wrong on that, but uh, whoever it is, it'll be quality info. All right. So. Good morning, Cliff. Good morning, Abby. Thanks to all of you who are joining me this morning. All right, so this week, yesterday I kind of hit on the topic a little bit about stop letting life happen to you and begin creating the life you crave. That's kind of the topic that I've been working on off and on throughout the year. So I thought, you know, and and then this morning as I was kind of going through my routine, part of that is journaling and I came across a word just, you know, as I'm writing out here that I hadn't used in a long time. And that is pursue. And actually, I want to look at this also because, um, yeah, pursue and and crave are a couple of important words. When, When we're talking about creating this life or lifestyle that we really want, it's a pursuit. Right. It's not necessarily a catch, but it's a pursuit. So that's what I wanted to look up. Defining pursue is to follow something in order to catch in, in order to catch them, not attack them. You know, to follow something in order to catch them. And then the other one I wanted to talk about was crave a powerful desire for something. A powerful desire. So if we are following something. In order to achieve it, we have a powerful desire for it. We, it's, it's the life we crave, the outcome that we have this powerful desire for. Then those are the things that are going to drive us. You know, I have, uh, I've mentioned a couple of times, you know, I personally, I get up early in the morning. I think winners get up early in the morning, but hey, you know, um, I do that so that I can have my time and get my priorities done before I start helping other people. That's just part of pursuing the life that I crave. If I were a little more poetic about it, I might say that the life I crave is somewhere in the morning. I, you know, wherever yours is, but the, the point is, in order to pursue something, in order to follow something, in order to achieve it, in order to have this powerful desire for something, you have to know what it is. And this is tougher. I, if you haven't done this, this is Friday. That's why I wanted to say this till Friday. So you have the weekend to think about it. I'm going to put, I'm going to seed this question in your mind and you're going to be able to think of nothing else all weekend until you do it. 
I want you to, well, I'm in my books over there. I want you to get out a piece of paper, index card, composition book, steno notepad, whatever works for you. Got a piece of paper and write down the description of the life you crave. Now, it sounds simple, but it's not always. Sometimes the best way to start is just by asking or describing your perfect day. What day would you get? What time would you get up? What would you do? How much coffee would you drink? Which I can't believe I sat down here without my cup of coffee. (sighs) Totally discombobulated this morning. Describe the perfect day. Describe your perfect week. Right? Start. Just live in it for the moment. Because here's the really cool thing. Right? Our brain doesn't know the difference. You ever had a dream? You ever woke up from a dream that you just knew that was real? And then you wake up and like, wow, it wasn't real. That was a dream. Your mind doesn't know the difference between, your brain doesn't know the difference between something you really experience and something you thought about. Your brain doesn't. Your mind does, but your brain doesn't. So spend some time, just close your eyes, living in that perfect day. I don't, you don't think you can see them up there. I got a picture up here on the wall of this lodge retreat thing that I want to build. And it's got this nice giant deck on it, a big fireplace and all this stuff. Every morning when I'm doing my visualizations, I walk out through the door with a cup of coffee in my hand, I sit down there in the chair in front of the fireplace. And that's where I begin my day, right? Live in it because that's going to activate the part of your brain that helps make it happen. So, begins with understanding what it is that you are trying to achieve. All right, so Cliff has a question. We're going to get to Cliff's question this morning. If you have, if you have, if you now have capital to pay people, what are the risks? If you have now, if you have now capital to pay people, what are the risks of giving away a percentage of the company to people you'd like to bring on board? Are there other options? Sure, there are other options. If you have capital, just pay them. It depends on what you want them to do also. Um, for example, if you want someone to do sales, in your particular case, Cliff, if you want you know, like your curators, um your curators could, I, I could, I could see a structure where you pay the curators, uh, a commission plus expenses. And if they don't sell anything, if you don't have capital, okay, thanks for clearing that up. Um, that way you only have to pay them. I mean, you have to pay their expenses, but you only have to pay them if they produce results for you. That gets a little trickier when you are bringing on people that are doing things that that don't have that direct tie to revenue, that, that direct tie to results. So if you're bringing on like a developer or something like that, yes, you can give them a percentage in the company, but how much? You know, the the, the uh, I'm listening to a great book right now, re-listening to it because I've listened to it once at least once before called uh, Zero to One by Peter Thiel. And one of the things that he says in there is that the present value of your company is equal to the sum total of all future revenues. Right? So if you think you can make $100 million with your company, then the present value of the company is $100 million. Because anyone that bought that would buy it, that's what they intend to get out of it is the $100 million, right? You're just, you're, you're selling it to them. That's what you're selling to them is future revenue. So (coughs) so all that to say, if you're giving a a share in the company to someone, you're giving them a share of that future revenue also. If it has to be sufficient, but if both parties are happy, if you're happy and they're happy that this is a, a good share, then okay. Now, the one thing I would caution you to do is don't give away the farm. There's, there's a difference between ownership and control, right? And you can give away ownership shares, but don't give away control shares. 
right? So depending on how the company's formed, LLC, corporation, whatnot, it might take a different form. But um, make sure that you maintain control. Otherwise, you're going to give away percentages as an alternative to paying cash and wind up giving away control of the business. We can talk about that some more the next time we see each other, if you'd like. If that still left some holes in your thought process, by all means, reach out, send me a note or an email, or give me a call. Either one's fine. And with that, man, I'm over again today. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. You guys have a fantastic Friday. Remember, hot coffee starting in uh, 30 minutes from right now. Over at Hudson Alpha, be there or be square. Uh, Let's see what else. Otherwise... That's it. All right, here's your question. Remember your homework for the weekend. Perfect day. What's the vision of success that you are pursuing? What is the life? Describe the life you crave. What is the life you crave? Write that down. That's your homework over the weekend. I'll be back on Monday. You be sure and join me and beat Joe to the punch. Somebody's got to dethrone him. You guys have a great weekend. I'll talk to you Monday.